Good day everyone, I am Frederick Salimi, Director of PMC of Pro. This e-course will be uploaded in a training workspace of EPC365. If you have any questions, uh, please uh, send us an email given in description. Have a good day and talk to you later. A brief description about my qualification and experience. Uh, I have a master's degree in dependability, which covers safety, reliability, maintainability, and availability. I also have a BS degree in process control and instrumentation. I worked several years with engineering companies like Technib and operators like Total. I was involved in pre-project, uh, feed, detail design, construction, and operation. Today we discuss about safety integrity level allocation. This is a generic version and will be customized later. The, uh, this course uh, takes one day and we give you access to EPC365 training monitor for discussion. Uh, the target trainee are uh, mainly instrumentation engineer, process engineer, operation manager, technical authority, HSC design engineer, and process safety engineers. The objective of this course is to give a practical understanding of seal allocation for oil and gas installation. So let's uh, start by uh, seeing that, uh, you know, the uh, flow chart of the seal uh, assignment. Seal assignment normally uh, starts by uh, identifications of the initiation and final element, uh, which is uh, according to IEC 61511. Uh, we have to identify the SIF. What are SIF? Uh, SIF is uh, a safety related loop is an instrumented system used to implement one or more safety instrument uh, function. So it is composed of any combination of sensors, uh, links input and uh, output cards, logic solver and final element. Normally, we define the SIF from uh, HAZOP or from shutdown logic diagram. I will show you later what is shutdown logic diagram and how we can use them. So when you uh, find your SIF, then uh, you, you have to define the purpose of the SIF. And then uh, you have to okay, see the causes of SIF. Uh, and when you and which call we call it the demand scenario and for demand scenario on a, uh, we have a demand scenario rate I will show you a guideline for that later and then we have to do the uh, safety by risk graph which are from IEC and sometimes the companies uh, calibrated for their own system uh, for risk graph by safety to the people, environment, asset and production. And during this uh, process, we consider two uh, parameters. One is uh, frequency of uh, uh, exposure and then probability of avoidance. And based on the risk graph, we we'll, we we'll look at the uh, the uh, the risk without any independent protection layer, and then uh, we achieve, for example, C2, uh, C4, uh, and here we look at what we have if we have uh, for example pressure safety valve uh, and then we reduce the seal and we define the, the seal requirement for the SIF that it was uh, defined here and because there will be several SIF and we will do the same process again. So we have to consider that uh, when you are doing this SIL uh, assignment, we don't take into consideration non-instrumentation based barrier such as safety and relief valves. Uh, these are not considered for SIL application. And, the, and finally, the principle of using safety integrity level 
are part of the IEC 61508 uh, uh, section 35.8 and IEC 61511 section 3.2.74. So how we prepare uh, seal assignment? So we have, the, there are certain documentation should be ready and, uh, and we have to have those uh, documentation to uh, start the workshop. So PNIDs should be ready and shutdown logic diagram. This shutdown logic diagram can be uh, from the uh, EST cause and effect also uh, is okay. We have to have has it completed and the money distribution defined by and validated by operator. This is very important and that's why we need to have the fire zone we have to have a sieve table the summary of this sieve table as i said we can have it from uh, hazop uh, and from the uh, shutdown logic diagram we should have the assumption receipt register and rule set um, agreed by company and calibrated risk graph ic they have on their own risk graph, but this can be adapted for each company. And then uh, defining the workshop and the venue prepared. Normally, uh, the workshop of the of the seal can be two weeks after uh, has a study. So the for the manning level, as I said, we have to have a fire zone. For example, here the operator should say how many, how many people we have here in case of the accident, how many people will be injured or uh, uh, or, uh, or or die. So about the shutdown logic diagram, we we have how to have a safety bar. We have to have the here the sensor, what executive action gives, and it goes. We can see it in shutdown logic diagram, and I said uh, we can see it also in cause and effect uh, matrix. So this is an example of SIF table that has to be uh, uh, ready for the before the workshop. And this has to be agreed with company, contractor, and the chairman of the sale. So basically, we have to write here in fire zone one, ESTD, uh, EST level one. This is a SIF number, SIF description, and what are the initiator, for example, alarm high high. What is the success carrier? I mean, that means how many detectors uh, or sensors are here? One out of one. And the uh, trans uh, input uh, transmission is hardwire. Logic server is PSS, uh, part of ICSS. Output also hardware. And the final element is STV, this number. And if there are other elements, and success area is one out of one. So this has to be ready to go for the risk graph and, uh, and verify it in the seal assessment. I'll show you uh, uh, here, when you have these, these, these things ready, we have to go uh, study by the risk graph from safety, environment, asset, production, and if the seal here is seal three, for example, is and we don't, we are not sure about it. We do the low power analysis. The same thing for seal environmental and asset. And finally, from this, we assign a seal uh, for this uh, this P A L L uh, here. And this will be. Uh, going subject to verification or demonstration that I will give in another uh, e-course. So calibration uh, risk graph uh, is, uh, is a semi-quantitative method. 
uh, it is based on IC615113 Annex D. And for the risk graph, we have to get uh, the agreement uh, about safety, environmental asset and production, occupancy of the area, which is F, and if there is a possibility of avoidance of the consequences, is uh, P, and the demand rate uh, of the SIF. So this is a typical example of the safety to life uh, for the safety. The, here we have the uh, concepts category. For example, if it is disaster, if it is more than five fatality, can be occupancy, can, uh, for example, uh, how many people are there, if there is a, for example, unmanned platform, if it is manned, uh, how many people, uh, and there are criteria has to be agreed. Avoidance can be uh, escape from the uh, uh, incident in case of the accident in case of initiation event. And here is demand rate. Normally we define it, I will show it in the next presentation, demand rate. For example, uh, here is if demand rate is uh, W2 and, uh, and we come here, disaster and we come here. So what is, uh, this is the sea level is four. So when we are in sea level, if there are uh, these areas, no shift required. Here, A may be uh, uh, no particular safety requirement, but maybe we write it as a, as a C, in the SIF list. Here is not recommended seek for IPLL or revisit design if it is in this area. And if it is on uh, B, we have to, uh, a single SIF is not uh, sufficient. For the demand rate, as I said, for example, if you have control roof failure, is W2. That initiation event frequency is uh, 1 e, e to the minus 1. Uh, so this is very important to understand. And I suggest that in the, uh, in the workshop, you take the demand rate, uh, all the rule sets with you to understand uh, in the meeting, because the meeting goes very fast. And you should uh, know that the uh, demand rate is very important. The same thing, you have demand rate, you have the uh, criteria for environment that you will uh, for barrel of oil uh, or reporting to the authority, etc. The company will give this, uh, this uh, agree about these uh, assumptions. Avoidance, if you can avoid this, uh, this one, this is the environmental uh, damage risk graph. We have the same thing for asset, for example, how many, how much does it cost in case of the failure of the unit or uh, areas. And then uh, the same thing, we come up with uh, risk uh, for this and, and also for the production, the same things. How, how would the delay, if it is one more than one month, uh, and then avoid, can be avoid this. <clears throat> So the example of the seal assessment worksheet is how it is. You know, you, you have here, you go through, uh, you, this is the sensor, this is a logic final element, and the other uh, final element, demand scenario this, and this come from HAZOP, and you take it from HAZOP, you put the risk graph here, you put the consequences, if it is disaster or uh, catastrophic, etc. about exposure can be avoided and the and demand rate, and you come up with some seal. The same thing for environment, the same thing for the uh, production. And then uh, you look at for the IPLL, IPL in the independent uh, layer of protection. And if, for example, you have uh, certain things based on the uh, protection layer, you reduce uh, the, the, the uh, seal level. And finally, you come up with some certain seal. I mean, if it is seal tray, you say uh, you have to do the low power. So now I give you a brief description of the LOPA. LOPA normally a desktop preparation. 
it should be uh, do, done by the chairman and uh, and and he will uh, look at it uh, and put it in the uh, number uh, by the uh, by this uh, this thing the purpose and then we will do a uh, worksheet a workshop uh, when he finishes job to validate uh, his uh, his assumption and the team should be the same team as uh, seal assignment uh, the people are normally in the seal assignment team uh, uh, we have to have the operator instrumentation engineer process engineer and the uh, company uh, safety uh, person and the design um, uh, and I suggest both of them come because the company knows more about occupancy and other uh, company rules and the uh, engineer HCC design engineer knows about the design so they can contribute well in the, in the uh, workshop so let's uh, discuss about about the typical layer of protection you have a, a pressure vessel full of hydrocarbon. There is a possibility of danger. So we have the different layer of protection here. One is a process design. For example, the first one is process design. For example, if, if we make this a fully rated uh, vessel, that in case of the overpressure, whatever happens, it does not exceed the design pressure of this vessel. So it is a principle of inherently safety. So one is the uh, principle of the incision and process design. The other uh, the layer of protection is basic control process alarm and operator supervision. So this is also a layer of protection. We have critical alarms and operator supervision and manual intervention. See yeah, another one. And uh, this one is automatic action, safety instrumentation system, EST fire and gas operation. This is very important that automatically uh, there will be some uh, some action executive action it will be done then there is a physical barriers a relief relief cases normally these relief cases they are they are mechanical failures and independent of the instrumentation so we take a credit for it and uh, phys um, physical protection for example dike etc and uh, plant contingency emergency response and if all these barriers uh, fails you have uh, effect to the people environment and property so we have to look at the we have to understand the layer of protection so I will go through this a little bit uh, independent layer of protection but we call it IPLL uh, basically effective in avoiding the damage when it uh, function as designed so it should uh, do this it should be independent of independent of initiated events and from component of any other IPL already considered in the same scenario it should be uh, auditable to demonstrate that IPL, uh, IPL is effective in avoiding the damage with documented system a basic control process control system BPCS may be considered as IPL only if uh, its failure is not in the initiating event that means it doesn't create a, as an initiating event and risk reduction factor normally cannot exceed at 10 uh, even if in case of multiple control rule protecting from scenarios uh, as the DS, uh, DCS itself is considered uh, as a potential common mode of failure. So let's go a little bit about alarm and operator action. So the alarm is, uh, we can get the credit uh, of alarm uh, if the alarm is independent from the initiating event. The action uh, to be taken by the operator is simple and efficient. And the operator has sufficient time to react. 
and also risk reduction cannot exceed 10. Uh, we can get an exception when uh, it is an, a slow uh, process evolving scenario, so that uh, more than 30 minutes. So we can take uh, take in the, into get the critic for the supervisor inspector. But the most important things here that training and certification procedure, normal testing and inspection, maintenance are not considered as IPLS, IPL, IPL, IPL. Uh, communication sign, fire protection, plant emergency response and community emergency response are considered as mitigation and protective barrier but are not considered as IPL in a layer of protection in LOPA uh, analysis. So, in order to um, give a number for the initiating event and other likelihood and their likelihood, here we have uh, initiating event for some event when you have a demand rate. Here, here you have a frequency of it. You start by this one exponential 10 minus one is for the control rule failure. Then you look at the probability of failure of demand, uh, which is this. Uh, which is one uh, of our uh, risk reduction factor. This is the probability of failure of demand. And then uh, you, you look at the time at risk. Normally the time uh, uh, at risk, uh, for example, uh, is between 0.01 to 1. It depends on the assumption. And then you look at also exposure parameter. For example, if exposure parameter, for example, for non-normally manned or offshore uh, platform, we can take this as 0.1. So that will reduce the uh, likelihood of event. So the calculated likelihood will be uh, as initiating event likelihood multiplied by time at uh, risk and uh, 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 exposure to, to a parameter and the uh, probability of failure of demand and some uh, and it will calculate uh, this one then you have to when you have the calculated risk you have to compare it with the target likelihood for example if for safety you have a disaster your uh, your target should be 1 to the 8 minus, minus uh, 8 uh, for environment, the same things, and, and this is the target of that you want to achieve. So here, uh, as you see here, uh, is seal one is uh, because of the uh, low mode of operation that uh, in we have. It is between 10 to minus 1 and 10 to minus 2, and risk reduction factor should be between 10 and 500. So I show you now uh, a typical example of the LOPA worksheet. LOPA worksheet normally here is for safety and for environment. And if you see here, there are, uh, uh, for example, here PC failure, and this is uh, initiating event, event likelihood. And then here we look at the IPL. For example, basic process control system, if we take any credit for that, for alarm, and here we took a uh, credit for mechanical uh, uh, barrier, uh, for example, because the PSV is sized for block outlets, uh, we take it as 0.01, and uh, for other one, they, we don't take it, and then here exposure time, for example, we take uh, 0.5, and, and finally we have here in the uh, calculated likelihood. This is the target likelihood, as I said, for example, it depends on the uh, things that we have. Then by comparing these two, we come up with risk reduction factor of uh, 28, which is between 10 and 100, and so it is still one. The same things for uh, uh, instrumentation and production. And finally, we come up here with uh, seal one uh, for, from low power point of view.
So now I go through risk graph action response follow-up. Uh, risk graph actions, when it is given here, uh, whether company or engineer has to give a response. Company will uh, should officially endorse it, sign it by a representative of company or can be several people. People agreed, agreed with comment, disagree, and to be followed. So these actions from the uh, the risk graph will be like this. The same things will be for the LOPA action sheet. You they write it here, and this goes here. And at the end of the phase of the project, it will it goes as a summary how how these uh, these things uh, uh, how many are closed, how many to be followed for the next phase of the project. We have uh, we developed a uh, seal uh, monitor uh, in APC 365 uh, powered by. Uh, SharePoint, uh, we can do the, the summary of actions and uh, very easily to communicate with the company and engineer to close actions. A, for the SEAL follow-up, a preliminary SEAL verification based on the SEAL assignment shall be made before end of basic engineering in order to validate the architecture of uh, SIS and configuration uh, of the SIFs. At such time, uh, equipment is not purchased yet and the preliminary SEAL demonstration is based on generic uh, reliability data. In case of uh, design modification, the seal assignment workshop shall be rewarded after a rehazard. Seal verification shall be reworked when the actual and guaranteed reliability data of the purchase equipment are available. Seal verification and final seal assessment uh, shall be completed during the detailed engineering. And the uh, seal uh, demonstration or verification shall be responsibility of EPC contractor and shall be performed by company approved third party. And final seal assessment shall be performed and validated uh, by company. Now I show you uh, a little bit about uh, EPC 365 turning work workspace. This uh, e-course will be, uh, will be uh, uploaded uh, in uh, risk engineering training in SEAL. You click on SEAL. When you are in the SEAL here for customized training, you can insert as a client all the information related to SEAL. Uh, and then uh, we will give you a customized uh, training for uh, approval. And when it is, uh, when it is approved, uh, we put in the for the new discussion here. Uh, the employee have one year to discuss about uh, different subjects about uh, uh, seal uh, uh, allocation and seal verification. Now I put a, a CSP video. This uh, video shows that uh, here in uh, uh, blood on drum uh, there were a level alarm high high uh, did not work and uh, based on this uh, uh, there were 15 people were killed and, uh, and billions of the dollar uh, costed for the uh, BP so I would like to I show I give this video at the end of this presentation uh, uh, but uh, I would like to go through risk graph with you about to see what happens here so if we go to this uh, this uh, risk because the 15 people were died it will become a disaster here uh, more than uh, disaster is more than 50 people occupancy uh, there were a construction people next to this blood on the arm and uh, and it is FB 
and an avoidance because the the accident is so quick nobody could, could escape from this is P, pb and because this level around high high it is probably loop failure or other things it is w2 and if you look at here we come up to four and four as we said is non-recommended seed for iplr or redesign so Imagine uh, here, uh, if, for example, the construction people were not next to, the, to this installation, if we could have disaster FA, we could not avoid from this, and if F2, we were in seal 3. So if it is in seal 3, normally seal 3 is a heap system. So normally, if we had this level alarm high, high, we had three sensor, two out of three, and the uh, PSSS or ICSS was seal three, and and executive action was the unit shutdown, and uh, then may we could avoid this accident, and uh, and uh, this is very important that you know that uh, uh, in most of seal uh, seal reviews that I was presented, uh, people uh, which contribute to the assessment. They are not very, very familiar about uh, the criteria, assumption, etc. Uh, so that's why I think a, a, a very quick e-course like this one is very important for the people who are participate in the meeting to understand the importance of the of this seal uh, seal uh, uh, review because it has an impact. And if the managers they know uh, that they by improving the integrity of the the uh, protection system or preventive system uh, they can avoid the billions of the dollars uh, they definitely they put the resources uh, a, a manover for them and also for the modification if there is a construction yard is next to it uh, you you for the training for the modifications of the change uh, rehazob and and seal is very important to understand uh, the uh, uh, the risk involved and uh, to and and get a proper uh, decision from the management thank you very much for your uh, attention uh, if you have any question please send us an, P an email to pmc at epc365.com we have two websites one is in french and one is in english we have the request form and you can send us uh, an email and we will get get back to you as soon as possible have a good day and uh, talk to you in our next workshop the hot feed entering the tower caused the liquid inside to start to boil and swell. Liquid filled the tower completely and began spilling into the overhead vapor line, exerting great pressure on the emergency relief valves 150 feet below. At 1.14 p.m., the three emergency valves opened, sending nearly 52,000 gallons of flammable liquid to the blowdown drum at the other end of the ISOM unit. Liquid rose inside the blowdown drum and overflowed into a process sewer, setting off alarms in the control room. But the high-level alarm on the blowdown drum failed to go off. None of the operators knew of the catastrophe unfolding in the ISOM unit. As flammable hydrocarbons overfilled the blowdown drum, operators nearby saw a geyser of liquid and vapor erupt from the top of the stack. The equivalent of nearly a tanker truck full of hot gasoline fell to the ground and began forming a huge flammable vapor cloud. The vapor cloud expanded in just 90 seconds, engulfing the unit and the nearby trailers full of workers. About 25 feet from the base of the blowdown drum, two workers were parked in a pickup truck with the engine idling. As flammable vapor entered the air intake, the diesel engine began to race. The two workers fled, unable to shut off the engine. Moments later, witnesses saw the truck backfire and ignite the vapor cloud. Powerful explosions swept through the area. The blast pressure wave accelerated through the ISOM unit, causing heavy destruction and igniting fires. The workers inside the trailers were right in the path of the explosions. The fires continued to burn for hours. 
12 of the 20 occupants of the double-wide trailer were killed, along with three workers in a trailer nearby. 180 workers were injured, many with serious burns, fractures, or other traumatic injuries. The wood and metal frame trailers were blown apart by the blasts. Firefighters struggled to rescue the injured and recover the victims. 50 large chemical storage tanks were damaged, and the ISOM unit remained shut down for more than two years. 